world we live in have all these proprietary systems and people these days need to know how to work many systems and the languages that translate the systems from system to system. So that was one of our big issues here. How do we teach the software in a non-proprietary way? Otherwise you can just go to one vendor and, and learn the software, but then you're kind of locked into that vendor a, a little bit and you know, so that, that was the big issue we had to overcome. So I think that's really important now because we found some open source software, we found some open source controllers, and then, you know, to translate to the other systems, we use BACnet or some other systems to kind of network them all together. But it's very important from the start to say that where you have capabilities in many different types of systems and you're not locked into one vendor. So I think that was a really big, important part. Uh, of what we did over the last year in developing the curriculum. My goodness, Frank, we did it. We are here. You are one busy man, and we're just so thankful, so grateful that you had an opportunity to come speak with us. We're here at Roxbury Community College, and I'm not going to give too much away because that's why we're here speaking to you, Frank. We want to learn more about this awesome program. And with that, we are going to get started. I just have a few questions for you. First and foremost, Frank, maybe you can go ahead and introduce yourself and just let our listeners know your uh, engagement with the Smart Building Program at Roxbury. Sure. Uh, I'm the Executive Director of the Smart Building Technology Program at Roxbury Community College, actually the Center for Smart Building Technology. Uh, the center is about two years old right now, uh, so we've been building the lab and all the kits, toolkits, so we can execute the curriculum over the last, mainly for the last year. And we, we just came to a point where we're ready to go. Uh, the center was envisioned by a group of Boston business people from some of the top companies, Boston Medical Center, uh, Northeastern, Harvard, uh, Skanska, Arab, and the city of Boston. And uh, they found that they really needed a uh, a center for smart building technology because they were, they were finding it very difficult to find employees, um, especially young people entering the profession. So that's kind of the genesis, and that's how we ended up where we are today. That's excellent. And January 30th, 2021 was the red ribbon cutting ceremony, correct? Uh, no, 20 uh, last year. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Oh, goodness, guys. COVID has got my ears yeah. all over the place. But that was after that day, students could start to enroll in the program. It's It was the moment where you guys had the red ribbon cutting ceremony here inside this classroom where we're sitting. Sure. And at that point, uh, not even half our lab was completed. It was just this room with this equipment. So that whole other room um, wasn't finished at that point. Wonderful. And, but right now, as we're sitting speaking with you, that entire room is complete. Yes. That's fantastic. I know that's a great feeling. Oh, wonderful. Well, Frank, um, you know, it's a very complex training program and training environment. Um, how do students react to working on these types of equipment? Yeah, you know, this is a new profession and it's kind of a hybrid of IT and electrician, electrical and HVAC. And we find that with, you know, we have to sell the program, this new profession, because it, students usually don't understand what it's all about. And I think typically a lot of what we found is typically a lot of educators in this realm, they try to do big picture stuff. This is an HVAC system. This is how it works. These are how buildings work. And, you know, for I th we found personally that that scares away a lot of people <laughs> often. Yes. Um, so we tended to, you know, here at the center, I teach personally uh, a lot of like STEM boot camps and like late uh, Lego Mindstorms robotics. So we teach a beginning robotics class and we learned a lot from those classes with high school students. So we kind of modeled our curriculum really on that where we start where they immediately use these kits and they start building some things and they get things working with the software and that's the way we start. It's kind of like a bottom-up way of teaching as opposed from a top-down. But, it, you know, after the first session or two, they have some tangible skills. They have worked 
with the software. They have manipulated certain uh, actuators and, you know, they have some inputs and outputs. And I think it's a, a better way of, of working. And it doesn't overwhelm them with these big, huge systems right off square one. And, and I think that's intimidating for a lot of people. Absolutely. That's fantastic that you understood and recognized the way that these students need to be taught, right? You understood like, hey, this community, we need to actually instruct by giving a nice firm foundation. And then they have a familiarity, you know, once you're getting thrown into more of the specifics of the program. I think that's amazing. Yeah, actually, it's listening to them mm -hmm. how they prefer to be taught. Because like my generation teaches top down all the time and we're like... You know, they, they're used to, I think an, uh, a student, students these days, they're just used to getting in and playing with the software and working with it and, you know, getting some skills out of that initially so they can achieve some competencies early on as opposed to, you know, no one ever reads the whole book on a game or something, right? Absolutely. When they start, so... Oh, yeah, we just dive on in there, and then we have a million questions that probably could have been answered. Then you go look it up. Absolutely. Well, guys, uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're here with Frank Merck, the executive director of the Smart Buildings Program here at Roxbury Community College. Thanks again so much for being here. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, we're back. We're here with Frank Merck, and we are so excited to be here. This is my first time, actually, in person. We've had many conversations. I've had many videos and photos sent my way, but it feels amazing to be here at the finished product of this smart building program here at Roxbury. So we'll just continue. I have a couple more questions for you, Frank. Um, for those institutions across the nation, just instructors, pro, uh, program directors, whoever's interested in starting a program like this, what advice could you give them? Um, you know, over the last, like, maybe five to ten years, a lot of things changed in this field. So one of the big issues with this field was uh, vendor agnostic equipment and software because all, you know, the, the world we live in have all these proprietary systems and People these days need to know how to work many systems and the languages that translate the systems from system to system. So that was one of our big issues here. How do we teach the software in a non-proprietary way? Otherwise, you can just go to one vendor and, and learn the software, but then you're kind of locked into that vendor a, a little bit. And, you know, so that, that was the big issue we had to overcome. So I think that's really important now because we found some open source software we found some open source controllers and then, you know, to translate to the other systems, we use BACnet or some other systems to kind of network them all together. But it's very important from the start to say that where you have capabilities in many different types of systems and you're not locked into one vendor. So I think that was a really big, important part uh, of what we did over the last year in developing the curriculum. Another thing is... Um, that we're really looking at in detail now is kind of virtual reality gaming kind of software that mimics this stuff. So people can, uh, because with COVID we're in class and out of class. So much of the stuff that we teach here is, is dependent on the equipment. So we've been learning a lot and working with some people on developing some virtual reality ways to deal with the equipment and maybe hook to a, a real site in another location so we can, and then maybe gamify that so we can have a, different teams working on different buildings and try to, uh, you know, have the output being the energy efficiency how, to determine who wins. So those are the things that we've been working on a lot. And, and I think over the last year, COVID really affected us a lot. Absolutely. So with that transition that you all made, um, you know, what advice, even in that transition, would you give uh, program directors for similar, maybe HVAC programs across the nation or those who want to start a specific building automation, smart building program? Yeah. You know, what, what would that advice be to say, hey, to start it up, these are kind of the steps that I would advise you to kind of take? Yeah, the tactile nature of what we do in person the students wire all this actual equipment themselves and they hook it into their laptop 
And that and that's really important because the hands-on nature, unless you do that, you know, once you do that, it's like riding a bike so you can do it over and over and over again. But you can't really do it unless you do it once. So that's really important. The other thing that we found that's really important is each student has their suitcase, so they have their own equipment to use, and then they can learn from other people doing it, making mistakes, and doing things the same way. So that's very important. Also, I think that people have a sense of ownership over their own stuff that they can, they can work on, and then they can compare the results to other people in the class. That's really good advice. And I'm going to let you go. I've, you know, I could, I could talk about this all day with you, Frank, because this is my opportunity to be in person. I came from Atlanta to uh, not only look at the laboratory, but of course, you know, speak with Frank, have this opportunity to hear from his words, um, how the program is doing. So my last question is, how are you doing as a program director? What's one of the greatest challenges that you faced uh, maybe so far in, in running this program? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people are coming to us now because a lot of people are, there's not many programs like this around the country or even in the state. So a lot of people are coming to us to learn how we got this thing started and, and, and how we developed it, the curriculum over time. Uh, so that's really interesting. Another, another thing that we kind of found that we do, I think that's unique as opposed to other centers, we tied our mission and our vision and our goals in a drop objectives to Boston's 2050 carbon neutral plan. We said we're here to produce the workforce needed for Boston to achieve their 2050 carbon neutrality goals. So that was a really interesting thing. And then we also put in there with a sense of environmental justice and a sense of urgency because urgency is the big issue nowadays and things, all these legacy systems like schools and universities and government, they move so slow. Mm -hmm. and really don't have time anymore and we have to be really creative about how we get this stuff out and get it get people through the system the, maybe the last thing is that's really critical and important is how do we interest young people in this thing and how how do we we make it or frame it in such a way that they could see the opportunities and there's huge opportunities in this profession it's a brand new profession it has legs it'll be here forever uh, most of the people in the trades now, as you, I'm sure you're aware, are in their late 50s. So all those people are kind of aging out of the profession. And the, what's behind there is this huge, huge void of people that don't know how to do the stuff. Buildings are, that's needed to do. Buildings are computers now. So people really need to kind of know how to operate them in that aspect. Young people listening, buildings are computers now. I mean, just take that and, and run with it, honestly. That that sounds exciting. That's enough for me to say, all right, I'm going to sign up for this program. Frank, thank you so much for being here today. Um, we will definitely be in touch, working closely, of course, ACP with Roxbury, and specifically helping with that out outreach portion. So um, we're really excited to see where this program goes and, you know, try to get these students, like you say, these opportunities. They need to know. Um, about what's right here in their community. So, Frank, any last words before we uh, let you go? No, I think, once again, this is a huge opportunity. I wish I was young at this, you know, coming into this field because it's going to be around for a long time. It has great salaries. You can scale up really fast, and there's such a tremendous need. I mean, I have people call me every day. We need students, and I don't have enough students to give them. So... This will be out here for a while, and you and it, and there's some there's a higher level purpose with this career. You're helping the planet, so it's it's good on every single diff different front. That's fantastic. All right, guys, just tune into our next episode. Thank you so much again, Frank, and we will be back with another one, another episode. Thank you.